Welcome to this radio channel and this is another video in our beginner's guide to the shortwave radio hobby. Now one of the common questions I have is when do I use SSB or single sideband or when do I use upper sideband USB or lower sideband USB? And another question is I got SSB do I have upper sideband? Okay, here's the thing. When you've got a radio that has SSB, so let's look at this receiver, the DGEN D1103. Here it says SSB. That means single sideband. Now let's get one thing straight right away. If you've got SSB on a radio, you have upper sideband, you've got lower sideband. There's no questions. You've got it. If you think you don't have it, it's because you just don't know how to tune it right. Because every radio that has SSB, single sideband, can tune an upper or a lower sideband station. That's the first thing you need to know. So don't go looking for an upper and a lower sideband radio. Just SSB means it can tune both. And that's it. But the difference and the reason why some radios exist with upper and lower, like for example, this Texan as upper and lower sideband separate, is because a radio that has the upper and lower sideband made separate is easier to tune on single sideband signals than a radio that has just SSB because you got a kind of work that BFO and guess if you're using USB or lower sideband or you know it's a little more complicated on a more basic radio but you know what it doesn't matter because you can tune it and I can tell you from experience even if it doesn't have separate upper lower sideband you get used to it when you tune signals quite often so don't sweat you know if you've got a more basic radio that has just single sideband it's gonna work you just need time to understand and you know get the skills out to actually tune it. So when do I use upper sideband or lower sideband or SSB mode? Well we've had our first part about international radio broadcasters and the international broadcast bands and so on and the shortwave schedules. Now most international broadcast stations are in AM mode which is the most basic of modes that all radios do. So it doesn't happen very often that you'll have a station in the international broadcast bands that you tune in SSB or upper sideband or lower sideband. It does exist. There's a station in the United States called W... Uh, man, I forgot. WJHR, sorry. That on 15550. And that station is one of the very rare and almost only stations that's running an upper sideband if you want to listen to their programs. It's religious programs for out of Milton, Florida. The other spaces where you'll use, you know, if you get out of the international broadcast band, okay, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go back and start with part one of my videos on listening to shortwave radio and understanding it. If you are listening to the sh international broadcast band, AM, every radio gets that. Outside of that, of those frequency ranges, basically, you'll almost always be in sideband. Because pretty much everything else is in sideband on the, on the shortwave radio bands. So, first things that you might want to tune amateur radio bands. For example, let me tune the 20 meter amateur radio band in single sideband. Amateur radio band in 20 meters is 14,000 to 14,300. You might have noticed that I'm starting at 14,100. That's because I want to have the voice comms. Below 100 is a digital modes and CW, which is Morse code. So here, 
I'll use USB. Why? Because I know that the 20 meter band is upper sideband. And you just tune around. I don't know if we'll hear anything because I'm inside and I'm using telescopic antenna. Here we go. When you tune a single sideband signal, you'll want to play with that little BFO. On this radio, it's right here. This is the SSB, plus or minus it says, which is upper or lower sideband. Uh, on this radio, if I tune S, uh, SSB, which gives me that little light, same thing, I've got this little dial here, which is called uh, basically fine tuning, which gives me the upper lower sideband modes. So you have this BFO on a radio to tune and you gotta match the voice. So basically what you'll do is play with the BFO when you hear such a transmission and try to tune around and get these stations to be sound correctly. Basically what you're doing is tuning around so that the voice sounds like voice. That's why you have to play with the BFO. Another thing that you uh, let's let's tune here a frequency that I know very well, which is 10.0051, which is weather station out of New York and out of Gander, Canada. So this is New York radio. If you tune without the BFO, basically, what happens? You hear like a Donald Duck type sound. It sounds bizarre, but it's voice. Here, I know that this is upper sideband. I'll be tuning that. And the question you're probably thinking is, okay, but you know it's upper sideband. When do I know it's upper or lower sideband? If I have a separate knob. Well, technically on shortwave, the majority of signals are in upper sideband. The lower sideband signals usually are in the amateur radio bands and they'll get, say, in the 40 meter band or 80 meter band or 160 meter band. That's 7300 and down, so 7300 and down. Then I'll put in lower sideband and tune the band. And lower sideband. There's not a lot of things because I don't have a, really a good antenna plugged in and I'm inside a home, so it's a little difficult. You also have the 80 meter band, which is a lower sideband mode. And the 100 meter band, which is uh, 2000, between 1800 and 2000 kilohertz, 1800 to 2000 kilohertz, that's lower sideband. If you forget these three radio amateur bands, 99% of all the signals you hear are in upper sideband, pretty much all the time. So what I'll do usually is, for example, if I want to tune a um, range of the international broadcast band, I'll tune in AM mode, so I'll, I'll make sure that single sideband or SSB isn't switched on. I'll tune and listen to the stations. But as soon... Abraham n'a pas fait cela. As soon as I'm outside of an, 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 um, an international sorry, broadcast band, what I'll do is I'll switch single sideband mode. And because I know that pretty much everything outside of the three amateur bands that I've just mentioned, which is uh, 1800 to 2000, 
3500 to 4000 and 7000 to 7300 are all in lower sideband. I'll tune in upper sideband for all the rest of the bands. And basically, pretty much everything you hear, even digital modes, are in upper sideband. Now, one of the things that I want to say here is that these are not rules that are in cement. They're there are some stations, there are some times when that rule is broken. So it does happen. For example, fishermen or drug dealers or whatever that you hear in these weird ranges of the bands, um, I've often noted that they are in lower sideband. So if you're tuning a sideband signal and you just can't get the voice right, why not try and tune it in single sideband, in the lower sideband, sorry, if you have the possibility. If you don't, don't worry. What you do, you just tune around with the button, the fine tuning button. And you know what? If you can't tune it, maybe you're a little too off on frequency. Why not just go up or down one kilohertz and try tuning it again? and you might get it right. So for example, if I'm on 10050 and in upper sideband, I can tune it, but maybe on some radios I wouldn't be able to tune it. So then just tune one kilohertz higher or lower and try to tune again. And you'll be able to listen and decode these messages. So upper sideband is probably the king of the the sideband mode basically in most of the shortwave bands but there are a few amateur radio bands and lower sideband below 10 megahertz and there are some exceptional broadcasts from stations that sometimes are in lower. Uh, so you know tune around and remember that outside the international broadcast band that I've been talking about, most signals are in the sideband mode. So you'll want to tune and turn on the SSB. One last little tip about single sideband. It's a fantastic way of detecting very, very weak signals. Sometimes I'll tell someone, oh, you know what, that station you're talking about, I can barely get it, but it's, I know it's there, but I don't hear it really I, I can't understand the program how do I do that simply by tuning the station in sideband and saying look there's a very weak carrier as you see here I can't understand the program but this tells me that there's a signal here so that's how I sometimes will know something's there, but it's just way too weak for me to understand what I can, you know, understand from that signal. So that's how you'll tune it. Um, remember AM mode in international broadcast bands, but outside of that, single sideband mode. Look for another video that I'll post, which uh, will actually show you the uh, amateur radio bands. Uh, it's a great way to start basically listening to single sideband signals. Uh, amateur radio bands are full of them and so uh, it's probably the first place you'll start listening to single sideband signals. So I hope, I know it's a little complex sometimes, but I hope you understood the basics of when you use single sideband and when you use upper and lower sideband if you have it separate on your receiver. If you enjoy my videos, want to subscribe to my channel, you'll be informed when new videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, problems, why not share it with us? We'll try to help you. Great gang on the channel that helps also. Give us a thumbs up if you like the videos, helps us on the ratings on YouTube. And thank you for watching.